So for the last three years, Ben Sells has been selling a product called it Plants. Now the only product that we carry, um, just because of the success rate that we've had with um, uh, spraying this onto your plants and controlling the deer. Plant Skid is a dried blood product. Um, it comes in a number of different um, types of, of, of applications. Um, you've got uh, your little powdered pellets, and you've got an actual pre-mixed spray bottle. Then you've got some powder, which is what we'll be using here at the greenhouse. And then you've got a really large, large um, bottle of, of the liquid. And then the small box, which we, we kind of recommend to some people because this product could do, boy, I guess about a half an acre is what you could end up spraying with. So um, we have got um, the, the, the dried powder in bulk here, and I actually go to people's houses and spray for them. So today what we're going to do on our video is show you how to mix the powder properly so that it's best, most effective. And then we're actually going to go to one of the customers who I've been spraying for the last, oh, six months and show you how to apply the product onto the plants. So let's take a look at uh, the beginning stages of mixing. Okay, so I've got my powder of dried blood, really the plant skid dried blood. And just to remember, this product is made out of only dried blood and vegetable oil. And the vegetable oil, once it's pre-mixed or mixed up and ready to be sprayed on a plant, the vegetable oil is what repels water. So what we have found is that in certain applications, it, you can put it on and, and leave it for about three months before you have to reapply. The only time that we've ever considered to reapply it is when we've had those torrential downpours, which we seem to have a few of here and there. So um, let's take a look at how we mix this. And the best thing or the best way for me to explain this is to, to remember how you, and most people I don't know if they do it anymore, but remember how you make gravy. And if you take flour and water, it's a little bit of a, um, a more difficult process. So I'm going to pour half of this dried blood bag in here. And then it's just plain water. Now what you need to do is have some sort of um, bucket or something like that that you're going to use specifically for dried blood. So make sure your tools are kind of set up for the, for the deer repellent. And then I'm going to start with just a very, very small amount of water. And then I have a flat little knife here. But what I do is I start with slow amounts. And you can see that the, the blood is actually sitting on the water. It's not, it's not um, mixing real fast. But that's that vegetable oil component. And so I start with a little bit of water and I'm going to make a paste. And once I have my paste, then I'm going to start adding more and more water and slowly get it into the right amount. The one box that we have, the one pound box of dried blood actually will make an, a gallon of dried blood liquid. So you keep kind of moving slow. The best way to do this is to go slow. And the nice thing about the, the powder pour component is that it doesn't stink. A lot of these the, a lot of the um, people say that it does kind of smell a little bit. I guess that's one way to know that it's working. But this, uh, the stuff that's mixed up fresh does not smell. So I'm going to mix this up. And the nice thing about this flat knife is, I'm, a knife is that I'm able to smash it up against the side of the, the bucket. And you can see that it's starting to loosen up. All the dried blood is starting to get mixed and when all of these clumps are mixed out when I get all these clumps flattened that's when I'm going to slowly start to add the water so I'm going to do a little mixing for a while it's probably going to take me about five minutes and then we'll come back and I'll show you what to do when you start adding the water okay I've been smashing around my little uh, chunks of dry blood and I'm adding enough water here this is a five gallon drum so I'm going to add enough water for about a gallon and then I have a commercial grade sprayer um, there are a number of choices of how you can take this and add this to your sprayers. You can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and get a, um, a more a, like a pump style sprayer uh, would be the most effective. And because of the power and the, and, the, and the amount of spray that you'll get on that, it will cover a larger amount of area as opposed to just a handheld sprayer where you're going to you know, spend some time covering all of the leaves and the flowers that you want to protect. So I'm adding here, just so you know that when I add the water, and I got a spray hose here, it does bubble a little bit, but I can kind of feel this. I can feel that the clumps are gone. This is a good amount of, um, of uh, liquid in here. 
And um, what I will do is, and, it, and I re highly recommend that people take a, buy a piece of cheesecloth, and it can be reused, buy a piece of cheesecloth and place it over the top of their sprayer. So when you pour this in, if there are some little clumps of dry blood that you didn't get, that they fall into that cheesecloth, those can actually be saved, put back in your bucket, smashed out, and add a little more water to them. And then, um, you know, it kind of makes it work, go a little bit longer. And that way, when you use your sprayer, you won't clog your sprayer. So cheesecloth works really, really nice. Some of the commercial grade sprayers, um, they actually have a little filter on the top of them, and that's what we will use. So I'm going to go ahead, pour this into my sprayer, and um, I'm going to meet you over at the house that we're going to spray and, and, and give you a, a little bit of an idea on how to, how to spray it properly. Okay, we've arrived at the house that we're going to begin spraying plant skin. And um, we've got our five gallon bucket, everything's pre-mixed. I've got my commercial grade sprayer here. Like I said, there's a couple different options. You can go to, um, say, a Home Depot or a home supply place and get a pump. Uh, we have a backpack player sprayer because we do a lot of spraying. It already comes with a filter. So what I want to do is I'm going to take this big old heavy bucket of plant skin and pour it in and show everybody exactly what's going to sit on the top of the filter. And if you're using cheesecloth, this is what you're going to see. So we'll do a little bit of pouring here. You can kind of see some nice clumps going. But um, we did a really good job. We let it sit for a little bit and then we, we, we stirred it up again and smashed some of those clumps out. But we're pouring it in. We've got about an acre and a half to spray quite a few plants, a lot of trees and shrubs, of an entire perimeter of our yard to spray. So I'll pull this back out. And you can see it's kind of foamy, but you can kind of see that some of the plant skid has collected on there in the clumps. We did a pretty good job of, uh, of smashing them through. And, um, and now what I can do is I can always add a little bit of extra water. Um, again, this is purely organic. I'm not afraid to touch it. It's not going to hurt me. We'll grab our lid here. It's kind of heavy, but we've got a whole lot of ground to cover. So um, we'll walk into the backyard and I'll start talking about spray. Okay, so we're back in the backyard. Um, there's a split rail fence that covers the entire perimeter that the deer have no problem leaping over the top to come in and start feeding. Um, they're lined by Arborvita. So what we're doing is we're actually going to spray the entire perimeter and I've done a couple pumps on my thing. My spray is going to be pretty strong and effective. Um, I'm watching where the wind is blowing. And what I like to do is, if you can see here, you can actually see plant skid. And I've sprayed it a little extra heavy. You can see it dripping. All right, it goes on brown. All right, and I'm going to do all of the trees and I'm going to do them up a little bit higher. When this dries, the deer with their noses can smell the dried blood component. Um, we've waited till about one o'clock in the afternoon why don't you just walk with me while I continue to spray. We've waited till about one o'clock in the afternoon. And what has happened is we had a really nice heavy rain last night. All of the foliage is now dry and the vegetable oil will be able to adhere to the plants because there's no wetness. And um, it will dry, it starts off real brown but it dries clear when the, when the plant skin is actually dry. And now the vegetable oil will adhere the bl blood component onto the plant and repels water. So we're just going to walk along here and spray and then I'm going to stop for a minute. I want to take you over to some of the hostas and the, and the actual garden flowering plants and show you how to spray there. Okay, now we're standing in front of some really nice roses. Um, they have both the flower and the buds on them, some of the dried leaves and things like that. And I'm just going to show you when we spray and apply it. Um, I get a really nice coverage again. It might be a little bit different for some people depending upon the sprayer that you have. But if you can see that there are brown, the leaves are turning brown, different plants here that will show you what's going to happen. But this uh, plant skid sticks to the plants and it will dry on there. Now people are concerned that it's going to turn the colors of their flowers different. Sometimes you might have to, depending upon the flower, um, do a little test run. I've not seen any problem with this product. Um, changing the color or discoloring the flowers. It actually dries clear. Um, the one thing to notice is that um, we are covering both the flowers and the buds. If there's any new growth, that obviously is not going to get sprayed, so that's something that you might have to come back and do a little bit of extra spraying on and dabbling with that to make sure because the deer are pretty smart and they come through and they will find that new growth that's not sprayed. 
So we're just going to cover these plants. And like I said, we're thinking as a deer at this point. I'm trying to think of the height of the deer. I'm trying to think of what they're enticed to, what they like to eat. Um, you'll know by what, what they're eating in the garden, what you need to spray first. Um, and we're just going to go through and we're going to spray all the plants and get some nice, nice coverage. Pretty easy. Let it dry. Um, we're going to be good to go. It's not going to rain. It's going to dry in the plant and you're going to have a couple months coverage. All right, one of the most important things that I want to uh, try to have everyone re realize is that weather is very important when spraying plants get. You need your plants dry before you spray and you need at least a 24 hour period after to make sure that the product dries properly. Remember, plant skid does not have to be reapplied every time it rains unless you get that real strong rain within a few days after the product has been applied. If you have any questions, give us a call at the greenhouse. We're happy to help you and talk to you about spraying. Good luck.